Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the DNA polymerase 1. So what is DNA polymerase 1 and uh, not more about its structure, we'll be talking about its function and speciality. So DNA polymerase 1 was discovered by Sir Arthur Kornberg in 1956. So it was the first kind of polymerase enzyme that was being discovered and it was found to be associated with DNA replication. Because uh, during the DNA replication means the synthesis of new DNA, there are the major part is the polymerization process. That means putting all the nucleotides one after another and joining them together to produce the double stranded DNA. Now that work is done by DNA polymerase 1 that was found by Sir Arthur Kornberg in 1956. Now what happens actually in DNA polymerase 1, it is, uh, I'm going to talk about certain special properties of DNA polymerase 1. The most important property is that it is a polymerase, that means it, help, it helps in the polymerization, polymerization, polymerization of nucleotides, polymerization of nucleotides. That is the basic function of DNA polymerase 1. Like the other DNA polymerases like DNA polymerase 2, DNA polymerase 3 which are discovered later uh, than this DNA polymerase 1. So the polymerization action is always there. But during that time once the different scientists start to work with DNA polymerase 1 and want to understand what the function of it, it was found out that uh, it is not only polymerizing, it has some, some more functions added to it. Some of the functions are is also called, the other function is called as the exonuclease activity. So another function is called as the exonuclease activity. Now exonuclease activity means, exo means cutting from outer side and nuclease, nuclease means an enzyme which will cleave nucleic acid. We know DNA, RNA, all these things are nucleic acids. So they can actually cleave nucleic acids. So that is another activity. So you can see the activity in both the way kind of uh, uh, same uh, different opposite like it is polymerizing which means it is synthesizing nucleotide or nucleic acid. Similarly, it is breaking the nucleotides. So it can synthesize it, it can cut it also. Now there is a question that why someone is going to do that, why some enzyme will which will polymerize certain thing can also cut those things. Now the easiest way to interpret this kind of thing is that, uh, that this, this, this during this process of polymerization, there is a chance, actually there is there are more chances of adding wrong nucleotides during the process because the process means actually in all this DNA polymerization system is that we'll have a, a template strand, for example, let me draw the template with this black, it's a template DNA, we use this template DNA and template DNA strand uh, to synthesize uh, the daughter DNA strand, for example, with this green color. So the daughter DNA will be placed, so during the placement of the daughter DNA, if there is any wrong incorporation of nucleotide that wrong incorporated nucleotide should be cut out of this uh, during this DNA replication process. Otherwise, that wrong or erroneous nucleotide will be present there and it can make the change in nucleotide in the DNA that is termed as the mutation and that can cause certain deleterious effect and dangerous effect inside the cell. So this is that's why they require both the activities polymerization as well as exonuclease activity and both the activities are presented by DNA polymerase 1. DNA polymerase 1 is not very much, uh, I mean, uh, during that time once the DNA polymerase 1 discovered, uh, people think that, uh, and the scientists also believe that they are good polymerization enzymes and they are the only polymerase enzymes for E. coli. I remind you, whatever experiment they have conducted for the E. coli, so they have found that in the bacterial polymerase, which will help in the polymerization process during DNA replication in E. coli bacteria, or it might be uh, present in some other bacteria. But the thing is, this, this polymerization uh, process, uh, they do actually, they are not that much uh, effective. Why? Because it was found out that the enzyme, if we start and put this enzyme in in vitro condition in the test tube with all the other required conditions for DNA replication, they replicate only a few stretch of nucleotide and then they fall off from the DNA. That means then a polymerase should be added somewhere here. So let's say this is the polymerase structure, polymerase will add and it will go into a particular direction which is the synthesis direction that is 5 prime to 3 prime direction of new strand synthesis. That thing, that, that's the direction. Now if we look at this direction, uh, after start adding certain nucleotides, very few number of nucleotides, this polymerase actually falls off 
uh, from this whole machinery. Now, the as a result, uh, it come to our mind that how then it can synthesize so long stretch of nucleotides, and the answer came that uh, that this might not be the only enzyme that is involving in the process because it can only synthesize a particular stretch. So the productivity with this enzyme is not very good, not very well in that cases, but it can uh, actually easily uh, produce certain sequences. So, uh, so the facial feature about the DNA polymer is one is that the exonuclease activity, uh, the function, the exonuclease activity for DNA polymer is one are both kind. That means this polymerase activity or polymerization activity of DNA polymer is one is only from five prime to three prime. That is the polymerization activity. And if you know the basics of DNA replication, you know that uh, DNA replication always occurs from 5 prime to 3 prime. That's the direction of re replication to occur. But the exonuclease activity for the DNA polymer is one are both two types. One is the opposite exonuclease activity. Now try to imagine that if I am synthesizing something from 5 prime to 3 prime, that is my direction of polymerization. So definitely, if we want to cleave something, we need to go backward. So the direction for the exonuclease activity should be 3 prime to 5 prime and that, that is true for polymerization 1, the exonuclease activity is 3 prime to 5 prime. But also what we find here in case of DNA polymerase 1, that DNA polymerase 1 also have a 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity present. So this makes this enzyme slightly unique because you know it can cleave the DNA or nucleotide sequences in the same direction in which it is polymerizing it, right? So it's a kind of unique feature that is present. So these are something very, very vital features that we used to know. Another thing is that this, this DNA polymer is one. They can polymerize things, they can cut these things in both the directions, right? And it is found later that during the discovery, after the discovery of DNA polymerase 3 and DNA polymerase 2, we used to know that, especially after the discovery of DNA polymerase 3, we knew that DNA polymerase 1 is, the, is not the major enzyme for DNA replication. It is a polymerization enzyme, but it is not the major enzyme which is helping in the DNA replication in, in prokaryotes. Rather than this polymerase 1 enzyme is a helper enzyme, like the other enzymes like polymerase 2 because it was found out that polymerase 3 is the, the major enzyme in the heart of the complex of DNA rep replication system but DNA polymerase 1 is actually an enzyme which is mostly used uh, for replacing the RNA primer. Remember DNA synthesis will not start until and unless it has RNA primer because DNA polymerase cannot initiate a DNA replication except it has a free, free 3 prime hydroxyl. So it should have a free 3 prime hydroxyl group to start the polymerization process. And to have this, to synthesize this 3 prime hydroxyl from, from the scratch, they require some other enzymes. So that enzyme is prime, primase and that primase synthesizes a small stretch of RNA component first during the DNA replication process to provide the 3 prime hydroxyl. And that primase enzyme produces the stretch and that is called the prime, prime primer or RNA primer. That RNA primer is produced during the replication at the very beginning. Now after the DNA replication is done, uh, cell need to remove those RNA materials or RNA primers because they don't require RNA materials present there. They want all, everything deoxynucleotide, right? So for that reason, in that case, they want to keep this RNA primer and then replace this RNA primer region with the DNA. So during this replacement of RNA primer with the DNA strand, those tasks are provided and done by DNA polymerase 1. And also if there is any nick present between uh, those two strands, that nick translation is also done by uh, this DNA polymerase 1. But it is not majorly used for the polymerization of bases because now uh, it makes sense that it cannot replicate, it cannot polymerize a huge stretch of nucleotide, instead it polymerizes a small stretch of nucleotide because it is not required to produce a lot, large stretch. So it is used for only for that. Another very important thing about, another very important uh, property about, exon uh, about this DNA polymer is one, and this is also a polymerization activity. So I don't think many people know about this, but this is a very unique feature of polymer is one, and that is it is it can act as a rna dependent dna polymerase that means normally it is uh, the polymerization activity of dna polymerase 1 is dna dependent dna polymerase that means it requires a dna template to start the polymerization of another dna 
DNA dependent DNA polymerase but it can also act as an RNA dependent so let's this is an RNA RNA dependent DNA polymerase so that means it can use the RNA strand it's as a template and can synthesize deoxyribonucleic acid and DNA strand opposite to it right so this thing this feature is kind of unique because you know in other enzymes you will not find that but though it has this rna dependent dna polymerase activity but still this activity is not very good the efficiency is not very good it's very very less efficiency is there right but this in a sense is the dna polymerase one and dna polymerase one is very important and we also found a kind of similar enzyme in eukaryotes also and that is called the dna polymerase alpha or something like that and uh, another another task I forgot to mention is that DNA polymerase one is also synthesized by the enzyme in bacteria that is called DNA polymerase A or Pol A. So that's kind of it, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.